This is Charlevoix, an hour's drive from Quebec City. It's a UNESCO World Biosphere Reserve, the definition of which is a protected area that demonstrates a balanced relationship between man and nature. Most biosphere reserves don't have any human habitation, but this one is different. Charlevoix's bustling towns make it full of life and character. They also make it easy to travel round and explore. And the good news is that in this wonderful region, there's a lot to take in. The whole area was formed about 350 million years ago when a meteorite fell to Earth and made this massive crater, which is about 100 kilometers in diameter. And probably the best way to see it is from up here. We have a lot of uh, amazing uh, things to see in Charlevoix, like um, uh, many falls, uh, the St. Lawrence River, the mountains. Uh, we have um, a lot of uh, diversity, uh, natural diversity in Charlevoix. That's why uh, that's very interesting to, uh, to have uh, another perspective to, uh, to Charlevoix by the helicopter. If ever you do get the chance to get up in a helicopter, you really must do it wherever you go travelling, particularly here. And all the little houses, all the little chalets, it almost looks like they've been made from Lego when you're up this high. But it's not just meteorites that have shaped Charlevoix. This is Oak Gorge, carved up from the rock by glaciation thousands of years ago. And the results are quite spectacular. The National Park of Haute Gorge de la Rivière Malbé is a very special place. It's a young national park being created in the year 2000. It's very spectacular to, to see this narrow valley with uh, the mountains each side of the, of the river. Often you, we see from the boat some eagles fishing from the, from the air. Uh, we see um, on, the, on the last uh, cruise of the day, often we see uh, the beavers at work and that kind of, um, of fauna, very interesting. The river may seem pretty serene now, but not so long ago, it would have been filled with logs being floated down the river to the local sawmills. There would have been men in the water keeping this flow of timber going. It was a very dangerous job indeed. They were quite literally stopping log jams. Now this died away in the 1980s, and now the main industry here is conservation. And if you're concerned about how big a carbon footprint you're leaving, then one of the most environmentally sound ways of getting about is by the oldest means of transport known to man. But don't be fooled, there may be some gentle trails here, but there are also quite a few seriously challenging hikes. La Traversée de Charlevoix manages a trail for hiking, mountain biking and backcountry skiing. The trail is it's safe in the sense that you are not going to lose yourself in the forest. It's very well uh, signed. I can show you here. Well, some signs have been uh, eaten by porcupine, but that's part of the trick. Sometimes you're going to see traces of uh, bears, or if you're lucky, you're going to see a moose. So it's really a very nice uh, nature experience. But not all of the wildlife in Charlevoix is on land. The mighty St. Lawrence River drains North America's Great Lakes into the Atlantic Ocean. And from Bay St. Catherine, you can join a tour to marvel at some of the incredible marine wildlife. Here we have three different species of toot well, the beluga, the uh, resident, the porpoises, the sperm whale, and also we have four different species of baleen whales with the, the filter in their mouth, the minky, the fin whale, the humpback, and blue whales. The minky, it's the most popular. Every season, 100 minky whales arrive here to feed, and this one is so active, especially when minky whales arrive at the surface to feed. There's also a lot of research projects since few years to know more things about those animals. More we know, more it's easy to protect after that, so. Everything here is geared up to make sure that the Bay St. Catherine area is the place to go whale watching. And you may see some other friendly faces as well, but this isn't the only bay in Charlevoix worth a visit. Bay St. Paul is renowned for its culture. It's a birthplace of Cirque du Soleil, a hub of gastronomy, and it's also inspired many an artist. So I've come here to the Iris Gallery to find out more. 
the tradition of art in Baie Saint Paul is mostly because of its landscape. When you drive around uh, the countryside, you will see beautiful landscape. So that was appealing, I guess, to the earlier uh, landscape artists. So you can say that it was a really great meeting place for artists of all mediums. And two of those artists were former street performers Guy Le Liberté and Danielle Gauthier, who back in 1984 formed the now world famous Cirque du Soleil. And if art's not your thing, it's hard to turn down a freshly poured glass of beer. I'm here with Frédéric Tremblay at the Saint Pub. Now, tell me, how long have you been brewing beer here? It's been now two, almost 12 years since uh, we started, yeah. And what sort of beers are these? Today we have three, uh, two lagers and two ales, which, uh, one which is an American IPA, uh, two lagers and a uh, Belgian white beer. They're all brewed on premises. You can see the uh, brewing system and everything and ask also. Sometimes when the brewer is here, you can uh, chat with him and ask him some questions about, uh, about the process and the different kind of beers that we brew. Charlevoix has already received widespread acclaim for its fine dining, but thanks to Frederic, beer in all its wonderful guises is now firmly on the map. You just have to remember that unlike wine tasting with beer, you usually swallow. So it's best not to have too much blood for the rest of the day. But the drink here was not always quite so free-flowing. Just down the road from the Charlevoix microbrewery is the Bootleggers House, another drinking establishment with some fascinating history. It's a project that was done in the 30s by the American. He bought this old house, he dismantled it, and he uh, hid it here, right here in the backwoods of Charlevoix. And we had in this period a uh, prohibition here in uh, Quebec. When he dismantled it and remantled it, he changed the, uh, the interior way of doing the house. And uh, he hid a uh, speakeasy in the attic of this house, and, um, and the bottom he created a maze. And so not to be caught by the squads and so on and so forth. The house has remained largely untouched, so a tour is a must. You can even catch a glimpse of past celebrity clientele. Yes, that is a genuine Elvis autograph. And the speakeasy upstairs is now a restaurant and bar, bursting with historical memorabilia. I came to Charlevoix knowing all about the sheer scale and impressiveness of the wilderness. But what I wasn't banking on was the people, how passionate they are about where they live, how welcoming they are to visitors, and how keen they are to share some of their quirky history. 